Neon is a noble gas that transforms glass tubes from this to this. Bright, brilliant, and bold electric-powered signs. To make a neon sign, you have to start with a design, and the design is transferred to paper at full size and backwards. The paper is laid down on a table, and the glass bender will decide exactly where the electrodes will go and how they will make all the bends so that it all turns out to look like the pattern. Dave Waller and his wife Lynn run Neon Williams in Somerville. In the late 1800s, there was a British scientist that discovered neon. He had separated it from the air in a tube and then just for fun, just put some electricity through it and it lit up and it looked just like this. That's the original right there. I wouldn't be surprised if there's close to 100 different colors that you can make. Waller says neon signs peaked in popularity in the 1930s and 40s. Back in those days, if you didn't have a neon sign, you didn't even have a business at all. I mean, hospitals, police stations, courthouses, funeral parlors, everybody had a neon sign. They were modern, they were exciting, and they were the future. That excitement faded in the mid-1960s, however, after enactment of Lady Bird Johnson's Highway Beautification Act that banned certain signs and eventually removed about a half a million of them. They fell out of fashion, and a lot of the people that knew how to make and maintain the signs just went on to other things or retired, and so neon sort of started sort of a dark age. But the need for neon surged again in the 1980s and still generates a powerful following today. Now, there's a lot of new ways to work with neon and a lot of people experimenting with new colors and new techniques. Waller says Massachusetts film tax credit has also contributed to a big boom in business. A lot of movie making is happening here. We built a big 30 or 40 foot long sign for the Tender Bar, which was a film that George Clooney directed. We've worked on uh, probably 13 or 14 signs for Free Guy. We're working on about three or four movies now, but I can't tell you <laughs> what they are. In addition to building custom signs from scratch, Neon Williams also restores salvaged signs, including this mid-century relic. They brought it to us in pieces and said, can you put it together for us? Once finished, this antique Sears sign will be installed inside 401 Park, the old Sears department store in the Fenway. We have been working for two weeks on it. The S is here, it's, it's so big it's in two pieces. We're really proud of the way this one came out. The team here has a lot to be proud of, perfecting such a precise and painstaking craft. This is kind of a unique business and it's got a loyal clientele from 1934. The Wallers are the third set of owners here. Wally Croft started the company nearly 80 years ago and ran it for decades. In the 1960s, he sold to Charlie Williams. Charlie Williams was one of the men who built the Sitco sign and had a long experience in neon and felt as though it was his time to have his own shop. After Williams helped build the Sitco sign, his newly acquired shop scored the contract to keep the landmark lit. They kept the sign maintained until it switched to LED. In 2005, nearly five miles of neon tubing was stripped out and replaced with LED lights. Neon has much more eye appeal, and also the light really cuts through the night in a different way to your eye. There's a romance to it. I always say that when margarine came along, butter didn't go out of business. It's the same with neon, that if you really want that look, you should always pick the original. Sitco has a more pragmatic opinion on the source of the sign's light. LEDs last longer, they're, they're more energy efficient. Gregory Caponegro is the Northeast Regional Sales Manager for Sitco Petroleum. We love the sign. It means everything to us. We've had a long history in Boston and New England, and we know that this is an important part of the Kenmore Square community. That history started in 1940, when the refining company was known as Cities Service. In 65, we changed the brand to Sitco, more of a catchy kind of a name, and that's when we changed the sign from the circular to the square. Since then, the sign has survived an energy crisis blackout, a threat of removal, and a fire. We're committed to keeping the sign there and doing whatever we got to do to, to keep it there. So. And now this, the construction of a brand new, taller building next door that slightly obstructs the view of the sign from ground level. We will always work with 
city officials. We've always wanted to work with the, with the private developers and also neighborhood leadership to keep the sign there. This is one of a kind. Neon Williams recently handled repairs to the lights on the old Hancock Tower in Boston. Those are the famous red and blue lights Bostonians have relied on for years as a weather beacon. They also provided some of the lights in the background of a Sam Adams commercial that aired during the Super Bowl about the dream of a nicer Boston.